has the power and authority mm -hmm. to face any situation, Amen. then he has sound mind. He doesn't get excited and jump at every situation mm -hmm. and take decisions within two minutes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to, but not always, and make wrong decisions. Sound mind. Very beautiful spirit. If you are filled with it, your destiny is sure, heaven. Because it's the spirit of God that takes the bride to heaven. And we need to be filled by the power and the spirit of God tonight. And in 1 John chapter 4 verse 18 says, There is no fear in love. If you really truly love God, and the love of God remains in our heart, there is no fear. So 1 John chapter 4 verse 18. There is no fear in love. When you really truly fear God, there is no I love God, there is no fear. Anyone got that verse? 1 John 4 18. There is no fear in love. There's no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear. Perfect love casts out fear. That's why three ladies early morning on the day of resurrection went to grave without any torchlight, without any human being, without any other protection. Otherwise, you can't expect women to land up early morning there in the graveyard. <laughs> there was no fear in, because of their love for Jesus. Your love for God will take away fear of men. Amen. Your love for God will take away fear about your reputation. Amen. The love for God will take about fear about anything in your mind. Amen. And once you are filled with the love of God, it will motivate you to the destiny where you need to go. Some people are afraid about one thing, and that's what the paper uses and sells maximum. Psalm 112 verse 7. All the papers and journalists know this very well. We don't know it. And that's why they sell their papers very easily. Psalm 112 verse 7. It's only read by journalists and not by believers. <laughs> and Psalm 112 verse 7. Have you read this verse? Please read it. We'll read it to get together. The paper which is writing only good things, will it sell ever? No. no. Only the paper which reports crime, brutality, accidents, and all kinds of evil will sell. So that is why TV, journalism, everything is negative. Yeah. If you write only about good things, will anyone want to read? No. So people's psychology is such that they like to hear these negative things. You shall not be afraid of evil tidings. Bad news. You shall not be afraid. His heart is fixed, trusting His, in the Lord. His heart is fixed, yeah. trusting in the Lord. So bad news shall never excite us or make us afraid. We trust in God. Amen. Is there any occasion where God says, ouch? No. He knows it. You cannot accidentally go and give a news to him. The volcano erupted there. Oh, did it? He knows it. It's going to erupt. Any event that happens in our life is clearly known to him. The, our future is safe in God's hand. Let me repeat what I said about my daughter Abigail. See, she wanted to do dentistry. And I wanted her to go to medicine. And she's so hardworking and I believe that whatever she works and put some mind to she will get it. So she insisted she wanted to get in medicine. In Kerala, back home in India, her medical result is yet to come, but she got second rank for dentistry in Ludhiana, where I studied in Punjab up north. And she said, I want to go and join. That's a college where you studied, Christian Medical College, Ludhiana. I went there. Her name is second in the list, in the rank list. Amen. And I'm going to pay the fees. The first person has gone in. I'm sitting outside and saying, why the hell is she taking dentistry? Why can't she do medicine? <laughs> and she is jumping around me saying, Papa, don't worry. That is what God wants me to do. <laughs> She's so happy, so excited. And I'm looking at myself. One friend of mine, my classmate of mine, now principal, her husband, she came and said, don't worry, George, dentistry is good. Let her do dentistry. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, who the hell is she to tell me now? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking, why is she not taking medicine? Suddenly, my mobile phone rang. Tick, 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 tick. Mm -hmm. 
and the bell, I looked it up. It was an SMS. The SMS from, was from Gujarat, Bombay, from a guy called Gul Kriblani who never sends an express SMS to me. He is 65, 70 years old. He brought Ben Heen to India for the first time. I met him there and got his number and it was in my phone. That's all. He was the merchant, fisherman, fisherman uh, Fisheries Exporters Association President. <coughs> Very big man, multi-millionaire. He sends an SMS to me. I said, wow, Gul has sent an SMS. What is this? It says, God upsets your plans. Eh? We have CCTV somewhere here. <laughs> How did the hell did he know I am here? He has no idea where I am sitting. He has no idea where I am sitting, and he doesn't. And he doesn't know I am upset. And says God upsets your plans. Oh no, this is too much. I can't be so much on God's radar. You know, we are so much on God's radar. Yeah. To set up His plans, God upsets your plans. To set up His plans. Then I started getting more interested. I started reading the rest. You plan the future by seeing the present. He plans the present by knowing your future. Have a great day. God upsets your plans to set up his plans. You plan the future by seeing the present. He plans the present by knowing your future. Have a great day. Hallelujah. Amen. My God is in control. Amen. He knows the beginning from the end. He is the only one who knows the last day of your life. Yeah. He knows everything is planned in your life. Why are you so afraid and worried? Why are you thinking about all the unwanted things and getting upset? Hallelujah. I could happily go in and give the check and go out peacefully. <laughs> God spoke to me immediately. My God is a great God. Amen. He is alive. And he's speaking to all of us tonight. There are different kinds of worries in your mind. Different thoughts that are tro troubling your heart. Bad news is one. And many of us are upset about bad news. No bad news can ever shake you up. However bad it may be. However the wrong time it may be. Because no bad news is news to God. He knows it very well. Hallelujah. Amen. No bad news Amen. is news to God. He knows it well. And above that, He has a good news for you after that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When you hear a bad news, always remember a good news follows. Amen. When you see a storm, remember the calm follows. Amen. When you see the night, remember the day follows. Amen. When you're going past into the valley, remember a time is yet to come. Hallelujah! Isn't it exciting that God is taking away all the negativity, yeah. whatever that we have in our mind, and filling us with joy and peace that we need. Hallelujah. 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 I want to read Joshua 1.6. Actually, that Joshua 1.6, that is another message of mine I like to say, but then I will take it another time, but I'll just read that verse again. Joshua 1.6. Be strong and courageous because you will He's speaking to Joshua after the death of Moses, who was a timid background, second fiddle, nobody knew. Always with Moses, but not a pushy leader, soft leader. Not a very strong man, timid man. Sometimes great leaders have such shadows around them. God needs them. God uses them. God keeps them. God prepares them. God has a plan in their life. And Joshua was one of them. God saw him right through everywhere when he was tagging along, along with Moses. And when Moses went, God decided to anoint and take up Joshua. If Moses led people of Israel from Egypt across the Red Sea into the desert, Joshua led people of Israel from desert across Jordan <coughs> to their promised land. Who is a greater leader? Joshua. Hallelujah. To lead people to promised land through the Jordan is a greater ministry than the beginning. So God had a correct person, timid person, a man who is soft to deal out the promises. Joshua dished out the promises, the inheritance, the lands. 
the great ministry that Joshua gave, the promise was handed over to Israelites through the hand of Joshua. And I know there are Joshua's everywhere. Moses is there. Deliverance is there. Getting them out is there. Bringing them across is there. But crossing the Red Sea to the promise is also a ministry. That is dividing the promises and giving it to them. People are there, so many people who cannot get their promise. They stay back and see the promise, mm, unable to take it. You know, they were very worried. Is it my promise? Their promise? Her promise? It's your promise. Take it. No, 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 no. Should I take it today, tomorrow, day after? There are so many questions. It's your promise. You just take it. Just take it over. No, 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 no. It's not meant for me. Is it meant for me? Such big promise? No, no, no. There are some Joshua's who silently lead people into their promise and divide it to them. Hallelujah. So he is telling Joshua. Joshua, what is he telling? Joshua, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Be strong and of good courage. Be strong and of good courage. Next verse. For unto this people ah. shall thou divide for an inheritance the land. Ah, you will divide the inheritance the land. Which I swear unto their which fathers to give them. Many years back I said and give a promise to them. But you are going to give it to them. Amen. Handing over the reward. The promise, the inheritance, what through the priestly man, the timid leader, second fiddle, the unknown, not mentioned man, Joshua. And God wanted to tell him, do not be afraid. He also says, I will be with you like I was with Moses. Amen. I will be with you like I was with Moses. Moses. Who knows more than Joshua how God was with Moses? No one else knows. Joshua saw it directly how God dealt with Moses. Amen. How close they were. Amen. How they spoke to each other. Amen. How the sweet times and hours and days that they spent together was visualized by this young lad all these years. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You walk with some Moses. Someday you have another ministry yeah. God has given you. There are Moses. Don't worry. Don't get excited. Your ministry is different. Everybody's ministry is not the same. So our problem is we try to be like the other fellow. No. Uh -huh. Just be what you are. What God has given you. What God has planned for you. And here, God has planned something very beautiful. Hallelujah. I have lots of things to say, but let me quickly wind up. Because I want to pray for you. I will read two, two, books, uh, two verses from Job and one from Luke and close. Job, Job 3.25 and Job 9.28. <coughs> Job 3.25 and 9.28. Today I took one of my smallest uh, sermons so, so that I could finish in time. <laughs> Shall we read Job 3.25? Mm -hmm. If you can read quickly for me, then we will go faster. For the thing I greatly feared has come upon me. What happened to Job in his life? Why did he lose everything? What he feared, what he feared happened to him. <laughs> Many of us lose things because we <coughs> fear whether we will lose. Almost always you think of rich people, they are always afraid whether they lose their wealth. Mm -hmm. That's why they keep insuring it. They are always worried they will lose their wealth. Somebody will run off with it. They are afraid. Whatever you fear will happen to you. <coughs> Don't be afraid. What God has given in your hands no one can take it away. Amen. What is, is yours, is yours. Amen. What was promised for the fathers and fathers and fathers, after many generations through Joshua was given. Nobody can take away the inheritance. So don't be afraid of all, all these losses. The insurance company is just exploiting that psychology. You are healthy, you are insuring. Actually, I made, I, I made the biggest mistake. I did not take insurance of coming here, travel insurance, till the last second last day. Suddenly somebody called me up last time also, called up and said, suppose you have a heart attack, suppose you break your bone, suppose you have a fall, suppose, he spoke to me for 10-15 minutes. I said, I'm not supposing any of those things, but you are spending this time two months, last time only three weeks, so more time, more trouble. How negatively he's done in speaking on the phone. And he's preparing me for the trip. And finally he said, which really hit me down. Finally, he said, if something happens to you, George, you will have no problem, but your sister will pray through the nose. <laughs> so, oh no, my sister has to pray through the I immediately called the insurance agent. Please give us insurance. I have insurance for four people immediately. I didn't even ask my sister. 
and I took for all the five insured. I'm happy two months back to back cover, front to back cover. I have come safely. Last year, I didn't come with insurance. I forgot about it. Nobody oh. told me. This time, the one fellow had troubled me. Oh. Four or five for going big pack. Somebody can have something. Yeah. Never mind. All insured. <laughs> People break your this thing. Right. And the next day I called up Sarah and said, Sarah, do you know something? This time I've taken five insurance. Why five insurance? I said, for you, something happened. Nothing will happen. I said, I know nothing, but two, three fellows called me and said, okay, if you're so worried something will happen, you could have taken for yourself. Or maybe for Swapna. Why for children? Three you could have saved. <laughs> she told me, <laughs> we think too much, yeah. we worry so much. Yeah. Today let me remind you before I close, we are insured in the hand of God. Amen. Nothing, no illness, no sickness, no accident, no trouble can ever destroy you. Yeah. Don't be so worried about your insurance and your retirement benefits and your privileges. He yeah. is your reward, yeah. he is your insurance. He is your everything. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is the faith and peace that we have. Job had one more fear. Job had one more fear. Job 9 verse 28. Job had lots of fears, but I want to just mention. I am afraid of all my sufferings. I know that you will not call me innocent. I am so afraid of all my sufferings. sufferings. Worried about sufferings. This is how scan centers and MRI centers and diagnostic centers flourish. They are worried about the suffering. suffering. For the heart attack that may come three years later, they do echo today. What is the point? They do for an MRI, something may happen today. Keep checking up, keep checking up, keep checking up, something may happen. Who is gaining? Afraid for the sorrows and diseases that may come. Don't be afraid for any of your sorrow Amen. and any of your disease because no sorrow, no sickness, no disease shall ever befall you without the knowledge of your heavenly Father Amen. who is the Father of Abraham, Amen. God Amen. Almighty. Amen. Abraham trusted him, Isaac trusted him, Jacob trusted him, and George Coble is trusting him. <laughs> Are you ready to trust him? Give all your fears into his hand. Amen. Fear not, because he is with you. Finally, Luke chapter 12, verse 32, and I'll pray and close. Luke 12, verse 32. Do not fear, little flock. For Do not fear, little flock. For it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Do not fear, little flock, because it is your father's good pleasure. good pleasure to give you the kingdom. See, the father in heaven knows that his flock then, now, and till the end is always little. And they are small, less powerful, no lobbying, no supports, because they are not with the prince of this earth. They are with the Prince of Eternity. Amen. So you, O oh little flock, do not be afraid because you have a kingdom ahead. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Why is our Christian life so joyful? Why do we sing every time? Because we every day, like Abraham, look forward to our home, which is coming. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. Look away beyond the blue. Jesus as my Savior, you take 
him too. I do Jesus as my Savior, you take him too. looking away beyond the blue, when our thoughts are far into the kingdom of God, when our hearts and minds are filled with God, none of the worries and fears will ever remain in our body. It will fly away. Let's spend a few minutes to think whatever that is a fear in our heart. You're worried tonight. What Satan is trying to just eat away your energy, eating away your hope and call, take it out of your system. Fill it with the Spirit of God. Go back blessed with the peace and joy that God is your shield and your reward. Just spend a few minutes in prayer. I know God has touched all of you in some way or other. But whatever area that God has spoken, make sure that you have no element of fear in your heart because those who are afraid will never inherit the kingdom of God. So let all your fears fly away. And let your heart be filled with the Spirit of God. Fill your heart. Fill your heart with the joy and peace that you have an eternal hope. You have a home beyond the blue. God is preparing and Jesus is coming back so soon. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everyone continue some time in prayer. This is a time of prayer. Glory to God. If you have something to speak to Jesus, you can tell him right now. The Heavenly Father would take care of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joshua, Moses, David. Let them through Israelites, through the whole of desert, and through the made them reach Canaan. He is our God who is able to do more than exceedingly above that we ask and desire. Take away all the fears that you have about yourself, your future. Fears about your children and family. Fears about your job. Fears about your finances. Fears about your health. Some of you are troubled by the fear of death. When you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you shall fear no evil. Because there's nothing that will happen to your life without the knowledge of God. Our God is a healing God. He's a rewarding God. He's an all-sufficient God. He's a God who is able to take away all the situations that is troubling your heart right now. And let me tell you, let him fill your heart with joy. The joy of salvation shall fill your heart right now as we are praying. Let all the bondages of Satan be broken in the name of Jesus. I release everyone into an experience of ecstasy where they enjoy in your presence, Master, like a child in the hand of the Father. Tonight, release yourself into the hand of the Almighty God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Throw yourself into the hand of your loving Father who is able to hold you. You have come thus far. God has led you so far. You're reaching the destination and there is so much in store for you. Don't sink at the last minute with the fear in your heart. God does not want you to sink in the last minute. You are almost reaching the goal. You are there right now to see the breakthrough in your life. To see what you've been praying for last so many years. is coming to you right now this year. He has prepared for you. This is your year of jubilee. This is your year of celebration. This is your year where God makes you free. This is your year. This is the year for the church. Amen. This is the year for the families. Yes. Receive the blessing from above. Yes. Take the fears off the mind. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. 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 May the Holy Spirit flow in our midst in a mighty manner. I want all of you to speak in tongues if you have the gift of the Holy Spirit. If you don't have it, just continue to say praises because you will be filled with the tongues right now. As we speak together, God's Holy Spirit will touch me, people. Those who haven't had an anointing, God wants you to have an anointing tonight. If there is a sickness, anything that is covering your body, be gone in the name of Jesus. Somebody who has tired, who is tired, who has walked into this place saying how I will continue my life. I cannot pull anymore. I am so tired of my life. God wants to empower you. Give you back the joy. 
He doesn't want you to be tired of your life. He's going to rejuvenate your life. He's going to give you fresh visions, new ideas, new purposes, new goals, which you have never dreamt before. Joshua, you have been waiting for this day when you are going to divide the promises to your grandchildren, to your children, to the church and people around in West Plains. You are a person who is going to divide and give the promises to the people who have been delivered from bondages. They receive, need to receive the inheritance of the kingdom of God. All these years they were in bondage. They could not receive the promise. They were tied down. Now they are released from the bondage. But they need to enter their promises. And God wants you to be strong and courageous so that you will cross the Jordan. That you will go across to your promised land and grab it tonight. Hallelujah. Receive your promise that God has told you for many years that he has been telling you tonight. Receive it. Enter the promises which God has kept for you. In the name of Jesus, break the shackles of fear. You have been questioning why it's not happening. What is the delay? Why it's not happening? When it's going to happen? When there is no answer? Answer is just real near you. Just receive it. Hallelujah. Having run the race so far so clearly, God doesn't want you to lose the last lap where you are going to enter in the promises that God has given for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody sitting here with a special need for prayer, I would want you to stand up wherever you are and we will pray for you. Hallelujah. Anybody right now, there is uh, need of any special prayer, uh, we would recommend.